Five Bears. This is Copper Bear. She's my first host in a long, long time. I'm going to let people pop in. Um, today we have Healer Bear, um, also known as Asha, and we'll uh, get her on as soon as she pops in. Maxed Out Bear, first one in. Um, Joe Gagan's here. He's going to have to remind me of um, the questions, the new questions that we need to ask. Um, Stolen Honor Bear, good to see you, my friend. And BCL55, we're cracking. How dare you, Bear? Welcome. Since I've live streamed, so oh, give me a second. Hello. Hello, uh, my gorgeous you, sister. How are you? Good to see you. You I'm too. Good. How I'm are? Good. How have you been? I mean, I feel like I haven't seen you or talked to. Well, we we talked to it like a couple weeks ago, but it's so good to see you. Yeah, um, yeah, I've been doing pretty well. I've been um, just kind of keeping it together, really trying to re-evaluate where I am in life and in just general, trying to get to a place where I just yeah. don't feel crazy, <laughs> where things feel really smooth and calm and that I can take on Good, new things right. that come in, so been through yeah, so how much about yourself? I'm just thinking about you so much you know yeah, you're I've such a beautiful a light and you're doing so many beautiful things for everybody all the time and yeah I just want to recognize that like I love you <laughs> um yeah <laughs> I'm really you. good I'm so thrilled to be here it's so good to be with the bears oh, yeah. I know it's been a minute like since I've been on, I, I think the last time I streamed really? was in October. Oh, girl, last year. right. October or November, and then I was taking some time off, and then everything happened with my mom, and that just kind of threw in a huge, huge yeah. wrench yeah, wow. in my oh, life. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so, like, this is it. This is it. Your, this is, like, your debut. I, I'm debut. so thrilled. And it's you. I mean, goodness. And, Great. Well, actually, I think if I can remember correctly, was it 2021 when when this started? And I believe you and I went live pretty early on in the game at that stage as well, if I can remember correctly. Mm -hmm. I don't even re remember what three. stream we're on. This is so I number three. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's true. Oh, that's oh no, I meant like all together how many streams we have. It's so good. Oh my god, it's amazing. Yeah, wow. Wow. So awesome. yeah. Yeah. The wow. crew definitely kept it alive. So I was really actually um, for looking them. today and I saw that there's about three thousand followers at the moment. And I remember when it first started and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. So good. Yeah. Amazing yeah. how that works. Plan to see it grows. Yeah, summer. Spring, summer, tw 2021. Okay, yeah, cool, cool. Okay, um, April or May 2021. <laughs> yes, that's about right, yeah. Oh, wow, how cool. I was living in Australia at the time. Yeah, you came in big. I was big energy that day, girl. <laughs> you never really... Big. Oh, you're always big energy, but, like, especially that day, it was just, like, really a powerful, like, definite, yeah. like, woof, wake up. But that's, um, that's, you know, what I really enjoy about you is you do have this huge, big energy and you're just ready to be out there in front of people. And um, I'll have to tell you a funny story. So I've, for my whole life, mm -hmm. I thought I was INFP, that I was very introverted. And maybe to a certain degree, I was when I was younger. I just didn't want to be around people. I was very much in my own world. And um, I recently took a similar Myers-Briggs test yeah. and I was ENFP. And it, I, you know, all along I've been telling myself I'm, you know, like probably 50, 50 
And I took the test and I was like, this is weird. You know, it was 74, it was 76, 24 extroverted. And, um, so it just goes to show you, like, there's so many changes that go on in your life and being extroverted. I never really thought of myself that way because I always feel like I don't say things, but in the last couple of years, I've been saying things like, this is definitely the time for me to speak up and use my voice wherever and whenever and really like get the people going. So yeah, an ENFP yeah. is a campaigner. It's the one that goes out and is like, this is yes. great, let's do it, you know? And and um, I really enjoy that role. It's, it's an exciting one where you kind of get the people going and um, it's, it's also like part of the visits that I did with bears going to different festivals and, you know, we got to meet at a festival and I just find it, I find it odd that I'm now calling myself an extrovert when, you know, for the longest time, I thought I was just an introvert. It's like, people don't know what's going on in here. Well, interestingly, <laughs> actually, extrovert and introvert so. typically pertains to the way that we fuel. So if we're extroverted, we get off on the of the energy of others and we fuel that way and introvert and typically we we fuel off of like inward work interestingly i was always i've always been extroverted and like all about the people but since my um i just took a test maybe a couple months ago and since i've been taking this journey i'm pretty much 50 50. i wouldn't be surprised if that came through for you after you learning a bit about your human design and your gene keys actually yeah, because that was a big moment for you and your growth. I remember that because you were in that course with us, the Smith, the Smith. Yeah, and that was a big mm -hmm. moment, I remember. Mm -hmm. So once you have that, like, sort of foundational insight with Team Keys and, and HD, like, yeah, I felt like that was a big shift in your energy. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, and, of course, was. I'm always like, oh. We know why you're here. You're here for like all the schools and all of like the the community, and it, yeah, I still see that. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, I recently was promoted yeah. to a supervisor at my job, and so I've found it really, really interesting and in just how that dynamic. Well, one, there's a dynamic shift of of you being just. Uh, a general employee and then going up into a supervisor managerial role and it's just um it, it's been interesting like people don't want you to change yeah. but then they treat you like you are different and it you know, I, I deal with this kind yeah, of stuff all yeah. the time in my life. But. I think it's so, you know, I just did a transmission on my Facebook page, a little bit of a live about the, uh, the, the difference between the malevolent queen and the tyrannical king versus the benevolent king and queen. And that really, it's that matriarchal energy of like where everybody is. It's really, really cool when you start really bringing that in. And as you move up into higher states of consciousness, which we are seeing in this lifetime and we're going to continue to see in this lifetime. Um, yeah, it's just kind of fantastic. Like, like to being able to take on leadership roles in that new vibration. So yeah, we're going to see a lot, a lot of shifts in the, in the leadership world. I've been connecting with a lot of, um, I have a corporate business CEOs and uh, like billionaires and millionaires and e like, even right now, like what, there's this one billionaire, he's such a good guy, but like, he's got like, little bits of soul sucky tyranny like we all do we all do nobody's free of of the darkness it's the it's our job to befriend the darkness our darker energies and um he's like so close to like coming into a contract with me but he like can't quite get there he even said he's like i don't know what it is i have to think and i'm like <laughs> think because um you know obviously as an emotion as in emotions and women in general as emotional beings we we move with the way that we feel typically otherwise uh, aside from the many millions of masculinized women in the western western world um but we move how we feel and the masculine feels it 
and then they go over to their analytical brain and the corpus callosum, which is like the threading in between the two hemispheres is much thicker in a man. So it takes them a while to think about it and come back to, to seeing the, seeing the thing and then making the move. So interesting. So. Yeah. What do you mean? There's only two genders. I know um, it's interesting. I don't, I don't know if I've told you, but I've got about, I've got two now teenage clients that are transgender. Um, they're my biggest teachers, one of them in particular, the wisdom. Um, and really what I'm doing is working with their fathers and their mothers on their relationships to the masculine and the feminine, because actually typically um, it's generational trauma. I've been talking about this uh, to make it really simple is that it's like wealth. So if you have three generations of wealth, you're either going to have a shitload of money or like cousin Wayne spent all the shit, you know what I'm saying? So like, you're either going to have a lot or very little because momentum builds. Same with trauma. So when trauma builds up, it goes generation on generation on generation. And so when we arrived at 2020, it was like a pressure cooker that woke up so many people, um, mostly to the external truth as opposed to the inward truth. And now we're really starting to see people move into the inward truth much more. Um, a lot of men getting activated at the moment, which is exciting. It is exciting. There's no choice, the feminine are going for it. So it's Very nice like <laughs> really exciting to watch these men start to come into the field, my energy field and, and desire more, uh, more understanding of, of what's going on. And um, I love men because they're like, I work with them for like six to eight weeks and then they're like powerhouses. <laughs> Women are lifetime usually with me for the rest of their life. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... I don't really talk much about it, but um, one of my family members, very close to me, um, she was a he from like 2021 until just this summer. And it was from trauma and I could speak to it. I knew it. It was not a family secret or anything like that. It was definitely something where the perpetrator went to prison and um, she and the rest of her family were kind of left with um, the kind of cleaning up of that emotional abuse. And I don't know if she's quite gotten over it all the way, but there's, she's getting to a place where she's kind of accepted it and is able to have uh, a, a, at least what we would consider a normal relationship. So now I'm just kind of moving out of that. And my heart has always gone out to her because, you know, I can see it. I can see the whole thing of like, okay, I, you're like this because of this. And I just don't know that the family members around her are able yeah. to communicate and that to her. You know, I'll so. tell you, like, as someone who's in this industry, so many people, I connect with so many people and like, they're like, they want to take the step and they want to make the growth and then they don't. And I'll tell you, there are times where I'm very soft and I'm understanding of people on their soul path. And then I'm also like, you're choosing that. And we are in a perpetual victim state in this world in the moment. Um, if you even look up and you know, I wrote that book Emp the empath is the narcissist and it's about this pushing and pulling dynamic in attachments and how, when you hold on to somebody or something, you, you're affecting that person and you're affecting your own health. And so I've written this book to ideally rupture this victim. Like if you look up reels, like there's so much of it in like, it's almost like everybody's like so into the trauma shit that it's like so much in like, in, and they're not getting there to the point where they're like able to like really free and like trust the plan. And that's what I see. And I'm like, come on, just like, like you're choosing this, you know, you have an opportunity to be crushing hot in a fucking awesome relationship. Like all of these things are a hundred percent possible for you. Um, you just got to do the work and align to it, you know, and I had to go through my own divorce and my own rupture and my own avoidance and, you know, like that narcissistic behavior. I had that in my first marriage. And then I've also been the codependent where I'm codependent on someone and, and, 
And it always comes down to your love, how much you actually love yourself. Like if you don't love yourself, you're not going to be able to love the person that's sitting across from you. You're going to look at them and be like, why are, why are you here? And then change them and change them and change them and nothing really changes. So I think that um, when... It's not no, even it's... really changing them though. It's like thinking that you can do things that will get them to a different spot, but it's like an yeah. environmental yeah. change sometimes. Cause that's what I realized about my last relationship was um, I was changing the environment, hoping that it would soothe and, and nurture the, my, my partner enough that it would get them out of whatever hell mm -hmm. they hadn't mm -hmm. had built for themselves. And mm -hmm. it was the third time <laughs> that I was like, oh, this is not a, an actual, uh, this is not an mm -hmm. actual like solution. This is actually doing the same thing over and over, but more mm -hmm. grandiose than the next. And it was when I realized that I was, I was like, oh yeah, I don't want to be in this cycle. I'm leaving the cycle. Like I'm not going to to be that person because it's not helping them mm -hmm. it's not helping them at all and mm -hmm. i don't know that there was anything that i could do and you know me i have a huge heart and i'm sure you have a huge heart but when i was in that relationship i was thinking that okay um you know i'm going to be able to help this person that is that i am counting on to be there for me um but then as I like left that and I started like focusing more on the, the world and like, what could I do? How can I be of service to the world? Uh, like, what can I step forward and give them? And it really led me to discover, cause there's all kinds of things, you know, we're talking about victims. There's all kinds of things that you can be like, oh, I'm a victim of this, I'm a victim of that. And it really was like stepping in myself, like, I am in control of the things that I am in control of, and I have to recognize that. And then also I'm looking at the world and saying, they're in X situation. And because they're in X situation, like I know a little bit about mm -hmm. that. I'm still connected to that. Cause we were, uh, you know, even just recently the bears have been really, hard against the sound of freedom and the child trafficking and mm -hmm. and yeah it's like we know that that's out there and it's actually acknowledging that that's out there and finding solutions not that you can change an environment but just understanding that we are all connected to those situations and that's what makes our society like as filthy and gross as we can perceive our society there's a lot of beauty and oh, yeah. good things that are coming out of it as well and it really is like this perception is you're actually connected to yeah. it all. And yeah, it's unseen stuff. Yeah. I think that <laughs> this sure. is an amazing opportunity in this lifetime to build kingdoms and que kingdoms and queendoms together. My, there is nothing stronger on the planet earth than the force of love. That's the feminine. The deeper I go into like my own sexual energy and my own feminine embodiment, the less I have a desire to like, I mean, yes, I speak really potent truths. I do. I like, if you follow me at all, I'm very, very triggering. I can be really triggering. Um, I have a lot of people that like to tell me how triggering I am. And my, my energy now is more of like the, ben the benevolent queen. So I, I view all as, as I view like the matriarch, the matriarchal energy is the energy of all God's children. That is the responsibility of the divine feminine of the divine mother. She holds everything. Now, when we have a whole bunch of Western women that have their hearts closed, not only does this affect home, it affects business. The feminine muse is the fastest, purest way to wealth. So when we have divine feminine women who are very strong, they're not pushovers, they're not, um, they're not fawning. Um, they have a, a, a strong inner king in knowing 
and a masculine man that can meet her in that energy, uh, you are destined to make multiple millions of dollars very, very fast. It's called the energy of muse. And actually, um, Elon Musk has a muse. Her name is Grimes. And Kanye West is always talking about muse. And it's written in this book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and also uh, Nikola Tesla. So these are like some men and Albert Einstein, they all had muse. And so this muse energy is, and this is what I do. These are the men that I work with. They, you know, million dollar deals, $30,000 clients the next day. Um, and it comes from the feminine's heart. So when they shut the feminine's heart out and she goes and thinks she's married to her boss, um, the energy is off. And then the container at home breaks down. And that's what happened for me uh, in my, my first marriage. I was so like the feminist agenda is very, very, very manipulatory. Women are easily manipulated because we're so energy of love is so strong that you can manipulate it very easily. So my suggestion in the next two to three years is to, to build a business if you have the capability and capacity to do so. Follow your heart's mission, your mission, or work for someone who's a heart led leader and doing these types of things. And that's what we're doing at Beyond EQ. It's been like the most amazing situation. And I watched the whole business crumble in January and um, I've been rebuilding it again. I had to scrape myself off the fucking ground, single mother, $5 in my bank account, screaming at God, what the hell is this? And then I cannot quit for some reason. I'm like, still going. I'm like, what am I building? And like, all I want to do is lay around and eat grapes naked all day with some hot king. <laughs> and right up over here, like building this huge business. And, um, and it's pretty awesome, actually. I, I've got big, big goals with Beyond EQ. So it's good. Yeah. I really, I really like what you were saying um because this is yeah. something that i've been thinking about and so i went back to mm -hmm. work in september of last year um and this is like the daily grind going into work whatever um it's in a career field that i absolutely love so it's not like terrible no, no. but i'm single i'm single don't say single um, mother say i'm currently with the cosmic masculine <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm pretty with, much. Yeah. Well, that's what I'll I'm get to, the, but you know, for I'm society, what they would call it. And, and, um, I knowingly went into the job knowing that this was going to be my male counterpart basically, cause I don't have one. And so this is my support system. And, and I'm a little, I, I just, I like the way that I can mentally place where I'm at um, by acknowledging that it is a different type of relationship, but I'm a little bit more conscious than before where I was like panicking of like, if I don't, if I don't do this, then this, if I, you know, and it just causes a lot of anxiety and stress. And um, so when I went back to work, it was like, oh, I know that I'm working for the man. And this man is, is, you know, you know, my paycheck, it's the people I work with. Like I'm that. looking at it from a different perspective until yeah. God sends me a partner and I'm completely okay with that. I'm very satisfied with that outcome and, and knowing that it could be like this for, you know, months. It could be like this for years. I don't know how long it will be for, but I'm present, I'm conscious, and I'm actually looking at my work situation in a different perspective. Whereas before when I found out that, oh, my work is my husband and my partner at home is like, you know, my family is totally like, they're not, they don't get any of yeah, yeah. this. Yeah. I go home and I'm exhausted. Um, and now I don't have to do that. Like I know to separate myself. So it's, it's just more interesting. Like if, if we know as women, if you're going to choose a career, like you're going to choose a lone, uh, you know, for some people it might be a lonely life. And if you're not conscious about it, it can lead to depression and sadness and everything like that. So really having that 
capacity to see what what kind of situation you're in is really powerful and um it's not the ideal way that I, I saw myself you know as a young lady like in the future it wasn't the way that i wanted it to end up however it is the way that um yeah. it is the way that yeah, it, yeah. it is right and now i love that and, you know that's such an energetic shift i can speak you know um obviously i'm the ceo of my company and I am completely devoted to the king. Like I call my business the king. I don't yell at my business. I don't get mad at my business. If I have a problem with my business, I take a ride in the car. I go scream in the woods. Um, and I come back as the best woman and I can be. I, we, I do all of my emotional transmuting. I don't yell. And I know you're at this stage as well in your life. And like, I don't get frustrated towards people's faces. I just don't do that. And that is something that has taken a lot of an emotional mastery on my, ha on my part because the real truth is, is I'm, I'm crazy as fuck. I got a ton of energy. I, I always say I'm like, if you're emotionally unregulated and slightly crazy and maybe stopped a man or two in your life, you're my client. <laughs> because I actually don't believe that women should be um, like these perfect pillars. We're wild, we're sexy, we're meant to be creating and like purpose for a woman is just as potent as purpose for a man. It just comes in a different energy. She should feel free to be covered with the ma from the masculine and so my business is always covering me it's always giving me exactly what i need um i have a coach right now and he is i refer to him as a kingsman i know what's coming for me and as far as the man that i'm that i'm going to be able to serve and i love him and he doesn't even really like he's kind of around and he's like not around and like it's kind of like i'm still do if, when i'm ready he will come in when you're king, when you are ready, the king can come in. And a lot of women don't understand the energetic framework. They want the king, yet they're not willing to be the king energetically. And that means forgiving all the masculine, staying firm in your energy, in your truth, in your truth, being able to say your truth without the fear of being abandoned. Um, all these really sort of deeper um, woundings that the feminine hold. And when she starts to vibrate at that. This is a frequency, right? So this is the alpha omega frequency. It's alpha and then the open heart is omega and then the masculine is the same alpha omega. Right now we have a lot of um, alpha males that are kind of on like the, like Andrew Tate. I just put a post up about him yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. We're, I was going to bring oh, that yeah, up. The, that was very oh. controversial. <laughs> I do want to read Bill Scott's before we transition into a different topic. Um, Bill Scott wrote, my wife was the same way um, as we were talking about being in business. She's home now with our girls and doesn't have a worry in the world. And, and yes, like if I was to choose, it would definitely be having like eight kids on a homestead, like crushing. Even today I went and picked um, 12 pounds of blueberries and I'm freezing them right now so that I can prep them to make, you know, jams or pie filling. I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet, but or just keep them in there and make blueberry pancakes. Like I love doing domestic things. I love homesteady like projects. And so if I was just dedicated to that, yeah, yeah I wouldn't yeah. be, I wouldn't have a worry in the world, but that's yeah, not the way that my life is designed right now. Massive, and massive ma masculine man as well. Like they're already in their partnership and, but you're in order to wake up these really powerful men, we need Western women that can hold the framework of the understanding of the template of, of architecture, which is the way the masculine's brain works. You have to hold that so that you can wake up these men that have a lot of ego shield, men that have a lot of ego shield need a lot of love. Um, and that means you have to have a really strong, strong framework. So that's, that's part of your path as far as like your, your dharmic path. It's very important because these men are big and they're powerful and they're starting to come through. So let's talk about Andrew Tate. Um, I actually had it. Sorry. My setup <laughs> is a little ghetto. <laughs> creative. Um, but let's talk about Andrew Tate. So um, you did post a 
pretty controversial. I kind of flip, was flipping yeah, through some of the comments. <laughs> um, and so maybe speak a little bit about what the post was about. And then um, beyond that, like what you maybe explain it a little bit more yeah. for the people that. Okay. So I am a light worker, which means that I have, I work in the energy fields, which means that I have an awesome, I have an awesome life. I clear people's dark energies for them. This can look like if you guys might be familiar with like ayahuasca journeys, part of my dharma is to run those ayahuasca ceremonies for men. I work with a lot of men that are veterans and have a lot of post-traumatic stress disorder. And when these things happen for us in our life, they're shadow. And so, so many men, a man kills himself every 84 seconds. They are working all day providing and going home and they either don't love the wife at home and they can't figure out why, or there's no fucking intimacy. And so my role is to work with a lot of men through that on all different levels of the ladder. So Andrew Tate is, I'm going to say this and I want everybody to try to keep an open mind. He really isn't different from the guy that's at the oil station who's got a same shitload of trauma. He just happens to be up here reaching millions and millions of boys. Okay. So he's still plugged into, let's say, so Andrew Tate plugs into multiple women and has inversions in that capacity where the guy at the mobile station watches porno nine times a day. Right. So they still have secrets in the closet, except Andrew Tate has a lot of, um, dark energies that we can see on a grander scale because of what he might be doing with these boys. And also he's got that, the war, the war club, the war zone, which these men are on some level in contracts. See, this is the other thing. I don't really believe in betrayal and manipulation because if a man is draining me and I'm hooked into a man, it's because of my own personal power. So, but that's a really high truth as well. And it's also, um, so anyway, my point is, is that for me, if Andrew Tate came and entered a contract with me to heal, I would take that contract hundred percent because I have, I've told you that I have multiple millionaires and billionaires. These guys own, they own companies that have 20, 30,000 employees. When you change the energy of a man in that position or a woman, there's plenty of women that are like that as well. The whole Hollywood, all of Hollywood all of those people that are in those contracts, they are star seeds. These are light workers. These are children of God. And they're sucked in to these contracts with these people that are literally sucking their soul. They're getting cancer. There's people at corporate, corporate that are fucking dying of cancer. And they're going to these soul sucking jobs. But if you hit the head of the snake, what happens because it's energy is when his heart opens, let's say Andrew Tate's heart opens to the understanding of divine king and queen family unit and he only chooses one divine counterpart then it will ripple down to all of those millions of boys that follow him so you don't want to shut the light out you want to figure out and this is how i live my life not everybody needs to do this i i don't men and women are different and my job as a divine mother in holding empathy is to take these darker contracts in my dharmic path so that I can get more people to the light. I don't run from the darkness. I go right to it. <laughs> it's fun. And also probably a little dangerous, but I train in dark arts. I've got um, a sister, her name is Avatar Nanda. She trains me um, in dark arts and darker energies and I'm a shamanic practitioner. And so I do, and I do a ton of resilience work on my emotions plus physical resilience work. I'm at the gym, you know, two hours a day. And so like the, all of these things to prepare, cause I'm moving to Hollywood. And so I do this light work where I, I'm going to change the, the way that we build contracts so that people's souls aren't getting sucked. They're getting fucking lit up and having fun and crushing. And like, and, th and that, I, I'll be honest with you in my sight, I see Andrew Tate coming around in this lifetime. We are so often caught up with what's going on in the now that you don't realize that any day Andrew Tate can get a wake up call any day. His mother might die and it might wake him up. It, no idea. Or even like 
or even like um just people oh, yeah. believe what well that's the other thing like i don't believe the anything news. That the media says i do this is the thing i've never met andrew tate i'm not going to judge him i wouldn't even judge a man i even when i say, shared like i don't judging men it doesn't work you want to push a man deeper into the cave or into the hole point your finger at him it doesn't work for anybody really but men in particular and that's just not the way that i operate if andrew tate came to me and said i want to work with you i want to feel better I, I would help him. I would help him in a heartbeat. I'd help anybody. I don't care who they are, as long as they're paying me. <laughs> and I do a ton of free work as well, <laughs> FYI. But I do, I do, I do charge for my services. Um, and I think I do believe that every man and every woman is on their own soul's path. I have seen my past lives. I was a big, fat, cunty, masculine CEO tyranny. I was like lining people up and chopping heads off. Who am I to judge somebody now in this lifetime when it's not my place to judge? It doesn't mean you walk around just being like love and light growing your armpit hair. It's about being stoic and understanding that love and truth are the strongest forces. I was, I was, there was a situation where I almost, almost took a ride with somebody like, and he ended up, because I spoke my truth and he wouldn't agree to the terms of my contract, he ended up just going back into the cave. I think he'll be back though. I can feel it. He was a good man. He's like, he's in his seventies and he had a beautiful soul. Just a little bit of like, you know, narcissistic tyranny in there, but who the fuck doesn't have that? That's the thing. Like, that's the other thing. How are you going to go and forgive yourself and then hold like the shame torch to somebody you don't even know simply because they have a lot of money and reach. Those are the people you want to reach with this work. Those are the people you want to reach with the hand of God. I mean, at least that's what I'm doing. I don't know what everybody else is up to, but may as well help some people it's fun <laughs> what do you think about that or what do you feel about um that? i mean i have i have certain judgments on the activities i guess that oh, andrew sure. Tate has been a part of and um so that may is a little some, disturbing and may i share something um, else you know, one of the so every five minutes mm -hmm. in the United States, a man is accused of a crime before persecution. So that is another massive contributor to the fact that every 84 seconds, a man kills himself. So I was watching the news for 22 seconds the other day because I haven't watched TV in about three years. And a man, a, a, he was a, a chiropractor and they found a camera in the bathroom. They put his name on the TV, they put his practice, they put his license plate, and all it is is an accusation. I, a, 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 accusation. I'm like, that could have been the cleaner. That could have been his crazy bitch wife. That could have been his coworker. And they have literally taken this man's name and dragged it through the mud simply based off an accusation. So for me, I do, I do like to point that out as well because men are being like, there's like a massive movement against the masculine. Oh, it's weaponry against everybody, but it's pretty bad against the masculine. And we do not need, we do not need nice men. We need it is, but I've, men. Yeah, go ahead. Now I want to hear your side. Right. right. So, so I've, I just, the things that I've heard come yeah. out of his mouth, there are some disturbing things where there's um, trafficking um, according to the law that I am not comfortable with. So I just want to put that out there to begin with. However, I don't think that there are people that don't have a way yeah, yeah. to be delivered, like you're saying. I don't think that that is off the table. And, you know, the bears, they can say what they want about Paul. I have my reservations and thoughts okay. about Paul from the Bible. So, so he wrote, uh, he was a writer of most of the New Testament. He was one of the highest educated, well taught of the Hebrews um, the is of Israel mm -hmm. at the time. And he was like, he was mm -hmm. taught mm -hmm. by the top teacher. And there was we call it a come to Jesus moment with him on the road to Damascus. And 
I understand that there's a lot of people that would just want to continually judge him. And that's mm -hmm. kind of some of the positions of people. This is just a Bible story. Um, however, his works said otherwise. And so for Andrew Tate, it's not that he's mm -hmm. not able to have redemption. Absolutely. I think everybody is able to have that. And I, if I was in the room with somebody, I would tell them that like, you're not lost. You just feel Feel that way right now you don't have to be that way and it's you know forgiving yourself forgiving others and also repenting of what you were doing that was wrong and repentance is all the time it's it's not just a one and done thing and i think a lot of people have this idea that everything is just one and done like they're stuck on mm -hmm. this certain timeline when in actuality we need that all the time. It's, it's not just a, a linear timeline. Mm -hmm. We're, we're on multiple timelines. And um, so I don't think that he's without, like he can't be forgiven. Um, there's definitely going to be a scarlet letter on him, you know, going forward, people are not going to necessarily agree with him or, um, they might feel betrayed or whatever their feelings are um, from him. But he does have the ear of a lot of mm -hmm. um, people underneath him. And so I think that if he did demonstrate a proper relationship saying it was wrong of me to do this, I'm married now and this is how I live my life. And then maybe um, he's not so much in the spotlight. I think that would be an acceptable like form where it would show show everyone like this is this is a better way to live. Yeah, and I'm a lot you also have to remember way. when he reaches that place, it's energy. So anybody who's plugged into him, it's no different from the bears. Um, the leader has a lot of responsibility, and in in any dynamic. So mm -hmm. myself as a leader of the conscious movement and my in the spiritual community as well as in the corporate world. I have a responsibility of how I hold my energy. So even with um, with um, Owen, he has things like his wounding, until he heals it, he can't heal the people below him on that particular wounding. Does that make sense? Like you have to embody it in order to teach it. So, so with everybody that's plugged into mm -hmm. Andrew Tate, when Andrew Tate heals that energetically, they will have to heal it or they will resonate away. That's how it goes. That's why people are always coming in and coming out and resonating. So there may be something that um, Owen goes through where um, with the feminine, right? Where he, because he, uh, like he has a lot of boys as, as children, there may be more feminine energy coming through his heart space. When that happens um, is when I actually think the bears are gonna get together with the mermaids. <laughs> my vision because <laughs> I've got my mermaids and we're all like preparing and the feminine goes first and so in order for us to activate kings and our divine counterpart so whoever Andrew Tate's divine counterpart is her, his divine counterpart if she ends up in my Lemuria and I heal her then Andrew Tate's gonna feel it he's gonna feel it and, you, and once your divine counterpart starts healing the masculine is going to have to heal it they have to because it's a siren it's like a where the fuck is she? Like you can feel her because it's energy. So we're gonna see a lot more rupture in the next 50 years. Men and women are gonna be coming off of all these timelines. Um, that's why divorce is happening so rampantly. Um, you know, according to my lawyer, it's up like 60% in the last three years. And he said, it's just like every week. And, um, and also on the other hand, which I stay a lot in my own energy now, I don't have time to judge somebody who's got multiple millions, almost billions of dollars. Why would I judge him when I need to be making that money so I can make the difference? So it's a totally different vibe because I'll be real with you. A lot of those people don't care what anybody down here thinks. They don't care. They, they couldn't give a fuck. They've got tons of power. So to offset power in bad people, you got to get that power in the, into the hands of the right people. And that's part of one of my divine assignments. My divine assignments are get as many people into divine union as possible 
and get the money into the hands of the of the people that are here to do good things. Um, and that's what I'm doing. And so I just do that every day. But like, I used to really care a lot about like, what's going on over there and da, 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 da. And like, every time you do that, your energetic emotion attaches to somebody else and you are creating a line of energy with frustration, annoyance, judgment, entitlement, um, sadness, anger. And the truth is, is they're so high up, not necessarily on the consciousness ladder, but certainly on the power ladder that they can't even feel it. So it's actually the biggest waste of your energy. You need to dump the energy into your own kingdom, your own build, and then make change when you actually start, start, start doing that. And you do that with groups of people or you do it on your own. Either way, you know, my plan is to do it with as many motherfuckers as possible. I want to have fun. <laughs> I love this place. I love her. I think it's the funnest place ever. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> it's like dark against light. Like we're in the straight up spiritual war. So like, so this was a really big pivotal point for me because I lost my business. I, I, I built my business on on ego, almost like in like a codependency. I had all these beautiful men, a couple of them were bears um, that helped push me up to the higher states of seeing myself. And now I'm in such a deep relationship with God. It's just me and God working until the king arrives. And that for me was like the biggest game changer. It's like every day I spend at the gym, I mean, I plan all my meals, I home cook everything. I like literally go through my checklist. I do my stuff. I take care of my clients and then I keep going and I just like, just keep that energy out. And the cool thing is, is when you do that, people become magnetized to you more so because they're like, oh, why doesn't she pay attention to me? And so it, it my desire is to just get as many people as I possibly can. Um, and the, there's a lot of star seeds in Hollywood. Uh, you know, we're designed, there's people that are watching this stream right now that want to be on the stage, that want to be singers and dancers, and that got inverted. Hollywood inverted that, and like, they're like, no, run to the hills and go open a homestead. Like, sure, that's awesome, and I'm 100% about that. I'm, I love babies, and I love of men <laughs> and I love hunting and all of these wonderful things. And I have a desire to be on stage and be a singer and a dancer. And I and we have an opportunity to change that in this lifetime. And and so that's what I'm I'm gonna go for and hopefully bring as many as I can with me. The people that are there are people that are extremely talented light workers that are stuck on these timelines. Um, in uh, in these contracts with these people that are puppeteering them in Hollywood. There's a lot of dark energy over there. Um, but I'm not afraid of the dark, so fuck it. God's going to take care of me, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't make me like this unless there was a reason. And so, I mean, I just pray every day that I'm going to be safe, and I'm going to do the work that he's asking me to do, which is like exorcism shit. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, for, for just to kind of concentrate a little bit on your business like what is a good first step for people that maybe are hearing this and they're like I have no idea yeah. what these two girls are going on about I maybe have, have some weird situations or yeah. maybe I feel stuck or whatever the feeling is like what would you suggest for them first to to start looking yeah. into to kind of clear that up and maybe feel so a little my lighter work is in detachment two results and a bonus okay two results deeper love of yourself and the relationships you're in which means you can speak your truth and that sometimes looks like leaving the relationship that you're in that's not healthy or that like one of your partners isn't growing it's part of it rupture is part of alignment um, my work, we try to do it as consciously as possible if that's going to be the outcome. So relationship building. And the second thing is money <laughs> purpose. I line people up with their purpose and, um, the confidence to step into that. The added bonus is as you get hotter, <laughs> all of my clients, like just either lose weight or just get like the general glow up because you're moving up to higher states of vibrational consciousness. So as you're moving up to these higher states of consciousness, I'm detaching you from the stories. And I do that through my method, which is inclusive of emotional intelligence, energetics, trauma work, epigenetics, and all different 
it's like a smorgasbord. You've taken a couple of my courses, so you know how this goes. And um, I mm -hmm. brought back my signature course. It's called Self Worth Warriors. It's for men and women. It is honestly the best program ever. We go deep into the coding of what you're actually here for and like your worth. Um, and in order to hold power, good power, good, healthy, beautiful power, power has a bad ring to it because of because the human race is deeply programmed into thinking that power and money is bad. I, I, do, not, I do not buy that story. I believe that there are a lot of inversions around that and that's not the way God wants it. God wants you in abundance. He needs the good people with the money. Like that's just a, that is just like a straight up fact. And when in the power of love, in the power of truth, masculine and feminine, inside and outside coming together unstoppable um and and endless endless energy um these are the divine union couples and so that's who i work with i work with people that are ready to let go of heartbreak they're stuck maybe 50 20 50 pounds overweight and they're like i don't know what it is or maybe even in a relationship where they can't stand their husband or they can't stand their wife and they don't know why and they want to love them and they can't figure out how to get we look outside ourselves so often i go inward <laughs> so it's not onward and upward it's like inward and upward with me <laughs> yeah <laughs> fun <laughs> and, and yeah that's what i do and then i also work with private clients all the time and in, in business i'm a consultant as well i've been consultant for many years i've opened about 15 restaurants in my career plus endless businesses so yeah Very awesome. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to kind Fun. of touch on that. Um, it's it was the weirdest thing. So I I kind of mentioned it um, to you, and I mentioned it to a lot of other um, just in chats and everything like that. But um, in April, so this whole year I've been going through the loss, yeah. grieving the loss of my mom. Not that she's died, but that her personality is gone and that was um probably okay i'm not gonna get emotional but <laughs> it was really really difficult for me to kind of come to terms with that everything that i do would just remind me of her and she's mm -hmm. still here with us like physically but her personality is completely gone and so there was a lot of emotion that is tied up and um I'm sure you've heard it, but there's a thing called the issues are in the tissues. And, um, you know, I fully can see how it's true. And um, in April, I made a declaration to myself. I was like, you know, in my mind, it's just like, you need to be healthier, be healthier. And I was just like, I'm going to lose 30 pounds by the end of summer. And I'm, yeah, I'm like eight pounds away <laughs> today. So, um, like it's a really, it's, it was a really mm -hmm. difficult process though. So I, I just want people to understand that when they do go into like self-worth warriors and they're earnest or honest about changing their life, even without, um, taking a course like that, just, uh, really want to, yeah. it's a lot yeah. easier to have I somebody love my push you. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Um, it's very, very, very helpful to have that partnership with somebody mm -hmm. where they're going to push you to be a better person, um, and mm -hmm. tell you the truth about what they see. Um, because sometimes you're blind to those things, especially if, been, if you've been living with certain emotional, um, yeah. Yeah. emotional issues, you know, for a long time, like you're blind to it at a certain point. It's almost like, uh, I was listening to a stream and I can't remember because I've been popping back and forth with Owen streams, but there was one where somebody yeah. wrote something that they didn't believe and they were told to do it for a whole year every day, write this, you know, 90 times. And it was something they're like, yeah, I don't believe that. And yeah. by the end of yeah. that year, they had believed it. Of course. They changed their oh, mind even, over the that, course of the year. So, with energy work. Energy you know, work is the quantum shifter. Like yeah. peeps be like, oh, I don't know, energy is woo woo, and I'm like, dude, li no, everybody, this is the best. Energy is everything, and then they like get mad that they went and attracted 
or like my vibe is my tribe and then they get like hate their narcissistic ex i'm like oh so your vibe is your tribe now but you don't want to talk about what you attracted when you were in the shits like you always a magnet in this place this place is the universal law of magnetism mm -hmm. you're always a magnet you need to ask yourself what you're a magnet for and that's based off your vibe and your vibe is based off of your trauma and it's based off of the genetics in your body and your dna that's saying i'm not worthy of receiving the thing so yeah yeah crazy so yeah go ahead he was he's saying they wrote it down a hundred times and he believed it yeah. yeah yeah and they and they believed it and i'm you know um i think it was yesterday's stream owen was talking about like you know like i was already on this like basically like mm -hmm. a spiritual campaign last year and it really kind of slowed and stalled over the course of this year but there's still things that i core true yeah. truly believe are going to happen like i think that there are just really big um oh but there are really big things yes. coming for us and yeah. and we have no idea of like what is on the horizon Man. but um, like if you look at some of the things that, you know, the elite are, um, putting out there, like, mm -hmm. like life extension technology and well, you can look at a lot of different things, but, um, Owen was talking about, you know, the age of consent and whatever, and how like right now our generations are not aging as much as past generations. And I'm like, that's like, you can look at that and say, oh, we're not, we're not, um, we're not maturing as, you know, a human species. But also I think that um, it really is in God's design to um, let us live longer and enjoy your, this domain. Your true in frequency in. and your love and, frequency is going to keep people living to like we're like 140 years old. But it's it's based off how much truth you can be in on your own truth. Yeah. Go ahead. Go on. Yeah. And um, so I I've had visions and just like whatever of what is coming and it really is beautiful and yeah. there'll be a lot of darkness. Uh, There's magnificent. gonna be a lot of darkness, but and but yeah. There is a lot, but there already is. And it's like you can I think what people don't understand, and I'm just going back to this like writing something down a hundred times a day for a whole year and that becoming like all of a sudden yeah. your you it's true. And people want to say that we can't, um, what is the word? It's not attract, but it's like manifest. Like, I think that there's, for whatever reason, there's weird connotations behind the word and people have one way of feeling about it or another. There's some, there's some stigma there that I'm like, what yeah. is wrong with the manifesting? Because like God yeah. straight up says in the Bible, like, this is your domain for you to so, so the, have authority over. And so while we're yeah. here, we have authority the feminine, here the to feminine create. is the creator. She is the creator. And so I love what you shared. I love how you said it's beautiful. This, the energetic frequency of anticipation of it's always coming is one of the strongest places to hold your desires. So what happens is, let's say I have a desire and it's like really big, right? So for example, I'm saying Beyond EQ is a billion dollar company. It is a billion dollar company. My father the other day was like, Asha, what are you doing to be famous? I'm like, pretending? And he's like, I don't care if I have four fans, there's nine people watching this right now, right? Like, it doesn't matter to me. I feel it inside my body. And that's what, that is manifestation. This is why it's so important. If you're a man watching this and you're single, to have an inner muse that you love and adore and you cherish and you lead. And that will bring that into fruition onto the planet. That's how this works. Mind is 90% of it and your mind is your energy, your belief around it. So let so I say that Beyond EQ is a billion dollar industry. And then God is all like, oh, 
this is how I'm going to go do this, right? So I'm like, okay. So I'm like, okay, hey, God, what's going on? Because I journal every day. I am a billionaire. I am running a billion dollar company with my king. I am getting laid six times a day from my alpha masculine, hot masculine man. I'm not going to have to ever make a decision again. And then I take all of this stuff. I take all of this and then I go like this and I throw it up into the universe. And then God says, God's like, oh, sweet. Asha wants a billion dollar business and she wants this hot guy and she wants to lay around being fabulous all day and money is just going to be thrown at her and she's going to help millions of people. Awesome. And he's like, okay, cool. I'm going to do this. And then down here on earth, my entire life fucking goes to shit. I lose my marriage. A guy comes in and tells me he's giving me $500,000 and dies on the way to go pick the money up. I end up with $4 in my bank account. Another man tells me he's going to give me $2 million and then ghosts me. I get ghosted again, ruptured again. Dude stuck to my soul for 18 years. And then I'm in my parents' basement. And I'm still over here saying I have a billion dollar company. And like my coach and I are finally like working me back up to like bigger months. But, but what happens is because of the emotional rupture, because of the emotional rupture, people go, what the fuck? The manifestation is not working. I'm the unluckiest person in the world. I got to stop. I got to go back to a job. I've got to quit. And I'm here to tell you that that emotional stuff, it's part of the clearing process so that you get lined up. And that's why I teach emotional understanding. So I don't have bad emotions. I don't have betrayal in my life. I don't give my power away to people that betrayed me. I'm the motherfucking creator in my adult life. Sure. Did that happen when I was a kid? It did. Sure. And I'm an adult now and I don't give my power to manipulators. You can't manipulate me because I don't let you do that. And that's a higher truth. Like, but betrayal, betrayal is a behavior that someone does to make you have an emotion, anger, frustration, deceit, sadness, deep sadness. There were days where I was crying every fucking day and no one's ever going to love me. No one's ever going to No, I'm never going to be able to do this. Why the fuck did I get this mission? And then I pull myself up and it's emotional resilience. And then you go, Oh yeah, that's right. I just needed that emotion. I needed, I trusted the intellect of my body to have that emotion at that exact right time. And that is what brings you to alignment. And then you get to kind of release it ever happening. If it happens to happen, if it doesn't happen, awesome. I died trying. I'm going to die trying. You know what I mean? So, and then gratitude for what you have in the moment. But that's, that's how it goes. And you can create anything. You just have to have the wherewithal to withstand it. And when you do energetics and emotional intelligence, you can handle that faster. And, and my business is only about two and a half years old. And so... Like, it's almost like we've done like 25 years worth of work in that time. <laughs> Think about my God, <laughs> literally nuts. Um, but that's what I'm here to prove is that my method is the fastest way to align people in their uh, soul line businesses. So yeah, it's fun. Crazy. Um, yeah, that's, that is a, a, like, I remember. Um, you saying like if you ask for something big like the changes that happen um, in your life could be really truly yeah. devastating it's almost challenging you can you actually make it through it do you have what it takes to when you do may get share, there may I share a story it? with you about um, that so I lived in Indonesia mm -hmm. I lived in Bali and I met this beautiful woman she was so feminine she hired me for my confidence. I forgot that part of the story. I just found, I just remembered that the other day, but she had hired me because I was so confident, but she was so soft and supple and she had the most fucking beautiful husband. He was like strong. He was an international speaker. So he had come back from like this international trip. He was such a king. And she was just like, like, honestly, like we went out for lunch and she didn't even take out her wallet she like just was like kind of floating through life and like and like a goddess you know and I was like I looked at her and I looked at him they were in like this embrace and you could see like the the like glow off of the two of them and I just looked at them and I was like oh, I want 
that that is what I want. And then I looked at my husband and I was like, we're going to do this. Within a year, we were divorced. And then I went through all of this crazy shit, crazy as shit. Everything was removed from my life. I was like sexually assaulted twice. One where I like, wasn't even sure if it was my fault because there's some subconscious stuff that happens with women that like, I had to face that and deal and understand this, the psyche of the feminine and her desire to be ravaged. This is a very primal desire. And all this came, all this stuff came up for me, all these events. I lost, I lost everything. I like my entire life crumbled and like only honestly copper, like six months ago, I remembered that story. And I was like, Oh my God. Like here I was thinking that it was going to be me and my partner at the time, my husband at the time. And the truth was, is that it was never him. I was in a trauma bond. I was in the wrong relationship. And my, my son, you know, obviously that's why I dedicated my life to this. I don't want my son to deal with any of that. I want my son in his aligned soul's desires. I have no idea what's going to happen with my son. And I also know that if I'm not doing my work and emanating truth and love and emotional regulation, he will end up on the wrong timeline. And so I don't want that for him. And I, and again, I have no attachments to his journey, but we can do this as parents if we actually step into our own soul's truth and save our relationships by speaking our truth and dealing with our shit. And so that's, but you are the creator. You're the creator. You're like, oh my God, like what am I actually creating? It's just like so nuts when you, when you realize that. Well, and that's the crazy, well, maybe it's not crazy, but that's the, that's a real eye opener when yeah. you realize that is that you are authoring a yeah. certain part of your dominion and so if if you don't know it and you're speaking if you say things that are negative or you say things are not going to work like i tell people all the time i'm like i don't want to hear you say that it's not going to work i don't want to hear you say that we can't do it because we don't have any money i don't want to hear you say anything yeah. negative towards yeah. what our goal is only positive things like what are you building to whatever that is because you know during work I deal with a lot of really like serious situations and I can feel the feelings of people when they I was trying to explain it to um, uh, one of my coworkers is that the reason that she doesn't want to do certain parts of the job isn't gung-ho about it doesn't yeah. is she's overthinking it and is thinking that it's not going to work out and then also um there's something within her where she's personalizing it and i'm i'm sitting there i'm like like you are in scarcity you, you got you can't think that way like if that's the way you are in your personal life like we're going to address it in our professional life right now, but you can't take yeah. that and apply it to where we're at here. You know, if, if you run away from your debts, like I've felt that I'm not going to be here. Like, Oh yeah, I've never ran away from a debt. Like that happens. And so now I, I try to be very proactive with, with addressing them. And um, that was one of the biggest things, you know, a few years ago that I had a lot of struggle with. And now it's like, I can, like, I've put into practice, like addressing it and being more assertive with it, um, or even aggressive with it, if I could, to settle them. So it's not holding me back. And it's, you hear it all the time in the bear community when they finally get out of debt and they're at ground zero, right? they're like no debts everything's paid off um there's almost this light feeling yeah. like where you feel like you're floating well because negative of that. energy right and it's negative so attachment though to be fair you can call it leverage in that way it's not even referred to as debt if you want to take it up to another linguistic little like bubble of fun you can just say oh i leveraged in that particular moment of my life and i'm i'm releasing the i'm releasing the mm -hmm. hold that the leverage has 
Yeah, well, I and I'm sitting here like trying to explain like it is scarcity. That is the root of what the feeling is right now. Why um, you won't address that email? Why you won't yeah, contact fear. that client? It's like, um, yeah. it, it is it is fear. It's well, fear if you want of to take not it really far. It's fear of the masculine not having it <laughs> because mas money is masculine any sort of <laughs> form of like money which is why like i would never disrespect a man in pay like i don't pay men um even my son is now 13 and we've discussed that he won't be receiving gifts from me anymore that are unless they're homemade uh cards or things of like great adoration and graciousness because i'm not going to penetrate my son with money like that's actually a big sort of disrespect to the feminine system because money is energy. And when you pay into a feminine being who's doing this energetic work, she will multiply your money. Um, and that's, that means looking at your shadow. <laughs> so interestingly, that woman sounds like she has like a bit of a, a wound around the masculine um fear of being seen most likely let her know say well, asha t said you have a fear of being seen get to the roots yes yes send her to <laughs> warriors. it's literally all about your worth it's about like your worthiness so good tell her to come on in <laughs> i love it <laughs> um i'm just briefly introducing her to that kind of thing because it was a big it was a big eye-opener um, one of the things that you were talking about before, and I, you know, I talked about my weight loss journey in this last, like what, three months or, or something. One of the big things that I, I had to come to terms with, there was a moment where I woke up and I was just really yeah. sad and upset that my mom, about my mom. And then it turned to my dad and I was so angry that there was, I was like, okay, now my mom is gone. Who's been my rock for my whole childhood. And then I don't, I never had a male role model to walk me from, you know, a young girl until where I am right now. And I, I just felt so um, lonely and isolated and I was so mad I was playing Final Cut just yeah. crying <laughs> watching dishes crying singing at the top of my lungs um, and just really just being really upset that nobody had protected me or guided me or gave me that hand that I needed along the way and just really mourning that. And, um, I got a very, like, it's almost, I went through this and I was crying, but there's a purpose to this. I was crying and I was like, so upset. And, um, I got a message and it was a kind gift from just a random guy on, on like right there like after the second you know playthrough of the final cut i'm listening to this and i'm like okay i don't need to be angry at men like they didn't do anything nobody knew that i would need that and i'm okay now and i'm not kidding you yeah, like wow. that week i lost I, five pounds i can believe that it so actually was Crazy. I, love, I love that story. <laughs> it was crazy. Like, no, because I think it's God showing you, well, you know, I'm in devotion to the masculine in this lifetime. Every masculine is bringing me gifts, every single one. When you change that lens as a woman, you will never be mad at the dick pic again. <laughs> I think I've talked, have you seen my post about the dick pic? So every masculine no, is having gifts. It. And so if you ever get a dick pic, that's the level of consciousness at which that man is operating. So instead I just said, I go, oh, oh, thank you. And then I just send my PayPal link. I send my PayPal link. I'm like, if you're enjoying my content, just pay here. <laughs> Usually they just scurry away. But like, 
I've, I've, I've gotten $40 from like Indian men before. They send me like, you know, photos of like little mems of like, I get a lot of like, of, of fans, you know? And so sometimes they send music, sometimes they send me tattoos or artwork that they've created. Um, and um, it's awesome, but it's also, when you really realize that like God is working through all the masculine for the feminine, if you live your life like that as the creator, you will never enter a bad contract with the masculine ever again, ever again. It's when you push it away that, um, that things can look bad for you. So, but I, I love what you touched on because rage is a huge, huge emotion that I, I love. I love rage. I do a lot of rage release in the woods. Um, I do weird shit in the woods <laughs> and, um, and it's really powerful to get mad at God as like your partner, as your husband, as your king, as your father, all of these masculine aspects, because they're, they're the, tr the deeper truth is, is they're not separate. There's the, and the same goes for the, ma uh, for the men with the muse and the queen and the mother, right? So you, you, if you've been given a ma a bad mother on mother earth, on mother earth you, you've got to look above that contract into the into the cosmic mother and get mad at her why did she give you such a shitty mother why did she give you such a shitty ex-wife and or somebody who you supported so much and she still left you because when you hold that animosity you are then going to um attract someone that you are not fully going to be able to ever love you're going to like have an avoidance against her and the same goes for the feminine so when we actually are able to like see past that and move through the rage and the feeling of victim and the feeling of like why me and you're able to you're like it's almost like you're centralizing the emotion into like a ball and you just rah you get at it then you are able to transmute it out of your energy field. And that's when you get the higher state of consciousness and you lose five pounds. <laughs> yeah. It was less than a week, but- I mean, it's, um, it's not even unbelievable. I'm like, oh yeah, of course. It's, yeah. Detachment, it's detachment from a story that you had around yeah. like that God wasn't keeping. Yeah. That yeah. I wasn't even conscious of of and it wasn't until that moment where i was grieving that the consciousness was hitting and i was like oh i i uh, i still hold this resentment i'm still holding on to that and so as i was you know as when i see somebody that's lost a lot of weight um hi thanks oh i do want to acknowledge really the chat i don't know how many are left are still in here, but yeah. um, we've got yeah. lots of people like coming that. in and just hanging out. But um, I yeah. So you were talking about I? people that lose oh, a lot goodness. of weight, and oh, when I see like these weight loss transformations, um, we had a a bear that had lost a significant amount of weight, and I just said, "Wow, congratulations!" I can't can't imagine like the emotional oh, no. shit that you had to go through to get from where you were and so to where you are now and that's you know generally true for everyone so we, and it was like the there was an acknowledgement yeah. of thank you for seeing that yeah. thank you for knowing like how difficult so that journey was the for body is constantly protecting itself fight flight or freeze and this is energy everything is <laughs> and um, emotions. So what we do is we, we put this um, emotional stuff on us to keep ourselves safe. So even when you're in the wrong relationship, you may lose weight, you lose your um, vibrancy if you're feminine and you're afraid to be seen or you're afraid to speak your truth or you're with a man that's um, very controlling um, and not letting, sometimes people end up in contracts with men or women that don't let them do the inward work because they know, the, the partner knows that that means they're gonna have to face their shit too because you have to, or it's gonna start resonating away from one another. So there's, Every single one of my clients loses weight, like every single one. It, the men, it's unbelievable. I've seen men lose like 15, 20 pounds in a week because they, so many men don't even have somewhere at home. Well, they're meant to be at home and this leader and this provider, and they may not have a way to release their emotions. And quite <laughs> frankly, 
in my relation relating i don't like i i personally live from very much a feminine template so i don't really have i don't want an emotionally available man i'm not into that i actually want a man coming in his thinking brain um and working through his emotions on his in his private time so that's why brotherhoods are so important like really cool ones <laughs> not ones where you like sit around braiding each other's hair being a bunch of gay boys but at the same time, um, there's like, you know, you need like a brother or like a, an elder. And, um, you know, men really haven't had that. I've seen, I've seen men that have like heartbreak that they're holding on to for like 15, 20 years. And like, they don't even know how to get out. And like, this is why, again, so many men kill themselves. It's like, they just don't know how to get out of their head. And all they really need is love. It's actually very simple. Well, and it's not love like necessarily that comes from a woman. It's it's definitely like their own internal That's loving the other of themselves, thing. They can't respecting themselves. Love. They may have a, the most beautiful, loving wife at home, and for some reason, they snap at her or they can't see her, or she's like, "What am I doing wrong? I'm being so loving toward him." And typically that's the case and more likely she's somehow a little bit codependent on him and not stepping into her own sovereignty and power. And he, he can't receive that love if he has, uh, if he's blocking. And sometimes what happens if, is if a man has that first love from like 18, 17, 16 years old, 18 years old, and she broke his heart or 21 or 22, and she broke his heart, he's going to put a shield above his heart. And the reason that shield is there is because that shit hurts and you don't want to feel that again. And so don't, you can't let that person in. And so you attract another person that's a little codependent and she doesn't have a lot of power and she can't figure out like why you don't love her and you're going to want her to change this and then change this and change this. And yeah, it's, it's a pretty common cycle and it's men and women. We're all fucked. So it's all energy. It's all energetics. And like, if this is right, <laughs> Yeah. yeah we're all that, I mean, to be one fair, together like, um dogma in religion um you know this may not be uh, something that a lot of your this crowd resonates with but i'm in a strong belief system of the muse of the of the mother energy i believe it is god and a feminine being of feminine energy as well um and i i stand in that truth i work in masculine and feminine dynamics um, this is a divinity lifetime where we need men and women coming together desperately, like desperate for benevolent leadership. Um, and, um, and therefore, I, my belief system is that dogma omitted a lot of the understanding of feminine energy to throw the planet off kilter and to make it so masculinized um, that we were easy to control in that energy. It's, I, I can't even remember what my mom said, but this was like maybe 15 or uh, 18 years ago, but she said that the feminine energy yeah. would be rising. And I don't know where she heard this or where that came from, but she would say some, like at the time, it's like yeah. future speak, you know, like she's, she's saying like, this is coming. And um, it was interesting to see how that played out because maybe it didn't play out in the way that she, she was explaining or um, what what the initial like projection of that was, but it is definitely something that did happen because right now we're living in a lot with a lot of feminization of both um, of the men where the women are, are kind of adapting to that, where we have to be strong, yeah. independent women to take care of ourselves. Um, and so it almost, it puts an extra hurdle into where yes, you ne yes. maybe want to yes be. Yes and no, because I think that, I think that there's a strong misconception of what the feminine is in that regard, because a king and a queen, the queen has to know how to use the sword she has to know how to go to battle. She shouldn't have to, and she should know how to. And when you don't give that feminine that opportunity to build that, which is what we're doing, we're rebuilding this. The Western woman is rebuilding that template 
the architectural template of the, the, the benevolent king. So we've opened our heart space and now we have to hold the architecture of that so that when the masculine does come in, there's room for him. With the women in corporate, majority of women in corporate, they're so shielded. Their hearts are so shielded. I'll talk about feminine energy and I'm like, the feminine is, okay, so like if a man is running a business and he has like four feminine women around him, he's going to crush it. This is, Elon Musk is like all about the muse. He's like, why wouldn't I just have love balls all over the place in their creational energy so I can make more money? And so I, I'll say this stuff and there'll be women on there and even men on there and they're like first off like if a man corrects me on a post it's a hundred percent of the time his own wounding like a man bothering with a woman is like for me is such a sign of like little boy energy like don't comment on women's posts please for the love of god just let her be her in her truth right like you don't need to worry about a woman if you're a man in that regard like it just it's it's wounding same goes for women like i just don't think that you need to worry about what other people are doing that much and that said when these when when i put these posts up in linkedin sometimes they're like what is this 1947 and i'm like you have no fucking idea like what you're talking about a woman is a money magnet in a fucking like like she wants to worship a man why would you want not want that and like she can still be in her dharmic power in her creational energy doing whatever she desires to do while in that energy and like people can't see energy so they're like what are you trying to suppress women i'm like do i look suppressed to you like i have a beautiful business i have amazing men in my life and i am like working for God and like, do I look like I lack power? <laughs> I don't think so. And it's just the craziest shit. And like, they can't see it because their hearts are so shielded. And so you're right. Like these women have like protection. We have to go into protection mode and there's a way to not be in protection mode and go back to the primal understanding that the queen has to use the sword. So you can still stay in the queen energy. You can still stay in the benevolent archetype of the queen without feeling fear. It takes time. It takes resilience. It takes structure in your finances. It takes inward and outward understanding. Financial, financial intellect. 85% of female entrepreneurs end up in poverty by the time they're 60 years old. They have no fucking idea how to run business a lot of the time because they haven't done the energy work. And like that means that when they get to this age of like 85 or they're like, I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself. I'm like, bring me men. Men have been building businesses for thousands of years. I always have men around me because I have like five men that are working in my business. They work, I call them King's men. They help me build my kingdom. Um, and they're amazing. And like, I take their direction. I follow my soul and I take their direction at the same time. They're like my eyes so that I can stay in creational power. God brings me these people because I want those people in my life. I cannot do it on my own. And I think what happens is women think they have to do it on their own. And what happens when that happens is she closes her heart and there's no room for the king. Like if you're a single woman watching this, empty out half of your closet, open up the space in your heart between you and your job. Like you said, Copper, about what you're doing with your job and treating your job like your husband and like, you know, I do the same. I serve my, I serve my king. I serve my business and, and I serve God. And that's like, it's almost like I'm submitted, which is a really s deep, like sexual practice that I do as well. You know, I'm celibate, but it's like very much sexual energy of like this submission, submissive role that I play in my business while also being the CEO, making decisions. And that's like a little bit more fun. <laughs> Titty bear just yeah um plan. definitely I know because he threw some Wu Tang my, um, ch the child um, um well first off I'm a big ass Wu Tang fan you know that Killer bees Killer bees and yes. also my my um <laughs> trauma schools is Project Wu Tang yeah because it's for the children Woo! 
Hells yeah. Riz, Riz is gonna <laughs> um, Riz is gonna fund me. But so go ahead and put that down in the manifestation log. I want to hear what <laughs> happens in the next six months. It's gonna be thirty six <laughs> chambers of a lot of fun. Let's just say that he's coming in. He's coming in. He wants to. You know, Wu Tang is like <laughs> wicked high vibe. They are like all about the. That's what I'm talking about right there. Like, oh, yeah. I love the idea of making conscious pornography because, okay, so this is another thing. I do want to talk about this. Conscious pornography. Okay. Right now, the pornography industry is like, no, porno, raw, bad. We have to be real, right? Sexual energy is hot. All right. There are hot women everywhere. We all see that. Okay. Nobody, unless you're blind, like, do not stifle your sexual energy there's going to be a way to create it consciously. And when a woman has healed all of her father wounds, when her energy is clean, it is, it is sovereign. When she is with God, when she is celibate, I am personally celibate for many years. When you are in this energy, you, there's nowhere for a man to latch onto. And that's another thing that I want to create. So I want that and like children's schools and like, you know, dancing and roller skating and then also being like a bit of a vixen so i'm just owning all of it in this lifetime and it's kind of cool because it's like that's like how wu-tang lives their life and that's like how certain celebrities live their life and i'm like yeah that's that's for me for sure like have all of it you know we can have so much fun um i want to kind of cut back um and talk about the the woman that yeah. has her heart closed off and doesn't like may not be connecting with her husband at home may not be seeing because this is yeah. this was a huge revelation for me um because now i don't look at my job i look at my job in a different way it's um it's there's nothing sexual about it it's just yeah. it's my work but it's supporting me and so mm -hmm. I, that's the way that i look at it and so i determine mm -hmm. how much energy i'm going to give it and, and then there's a moment of time during the day, there's a moment of time for the weekend when all of that is turned off and it's just like, this is my time now. I'm hanging out with my family. I'm going swimming at the reservoir, like whatever it's going to be. So, um, but the woman who has her heart cut off, because I've been this woman, um, the, uh, the feelings that were gonna come up are, they're burnout. Um, it's overworking yourself, not being creative. If you shut that love off on yourself, you're shutting off That's your right. feminine creative energy. And unless you're channeling it somewhere else, like making jewelry, cooking, baking, like whatever the thing is that brings mm -hmm. you creative joy, unless you have that, like you're going to put yourself in a really miserable position, not just emotionally, yeah. but physically, it, yeah. it will show itself. And um, I, I know how it feels to be in that position because I yeah. was in that I'm, position, I mean, not even boat, five you know, years I mean, ago. Yeah, feminism is, so, feminism is real. And it, it, it men, women have been targeted uh, in that regard which is now making emasculated men because because the feminine's frequency is so strong love is the strongest force and that's what the feminine is when you target that and you take that away in the law of magnetism the opposite energy has to has to mold itself into that so when we have masculinized love we have emasculated man or we have the man that runs for the hills and chooses peace the easy path which is actually denying his very deep desire of love every man and every woman has the deepest desire to be loved by their divine counterpart i would go to even say nothing against the gay community i work a lot with the gay community i love the gay community and also at the same time the majority of what i see in my practice is that gay a lot of gay uh gay uh behaviors stem from trauma and sort of, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about this with like porno, uh, child pornography and like all these, these are genetics. Um, and there's, there's long lines of 
kings and queens, even people in this stream right now that have royal coding, royal codes um, that they have access to. And when you access that, you, you have to move through the trauma around that. And so, yeah. Did you have a question though? What was the question? Oh, I did it. And I was yeah. just oh, the heart, um, the heart speaking yeah, the heart to, to what you were so saying. What I've found, the heart. Um, I vibrate obviously at a much higher frequency. So I'm very, very open about submission, about um, my own personal self-pleasure practices and like my own like, you know, sexual energy. I'm like, it's part of who I am. It is the strongest life force on the planet. As a matter of fact, it makes life. <laughs> you seed something it's going to multiply it's going to grow and so when i when i teach in self-worth warriors it's a little bit of a lower it my book the empath is a narcissist amazing book you should pick it up it's 30 bucks it's 28 bucks um and it, it's tons of healing and then the self-worth warriors is a little higher echelon and then i get into the masculine and feminine dynamics what i've found is that if i start talking about deeper submission or like worshiping a man to women that are devoting yourself to a masculine man in leadership. If I say that to somebody who's like in like in like a corporate environment environment, eight out of ten times she's gonna think I'm crazy or she is going to um, not understand what I'm saying. So I don't care what people think about me and my truth. It's not my problem. And also at the same time my courses are designed to bring people into these truths so they can see for themselves uh, what it's what this is supposed to be. You can't have two leaders in a household. So what happens with those women, and I know this, is you end up married to this job and you become codependent on your boss. And so like, if he's a little bit tyrannical and not really looking at you or she, you, you consume yourself into them and you become codependent on them and then you're ignoring the love at home. And, and that is called push and pull. And it happens all the time. It happens in your own relation. Most, most relationships are like this. The result is no intimacy, um, money leaks, overweight. Um, and, you know, we just say that that's normal, but that's actually completely not normal. People should be having lots of babies and lots of sex and lots of money. <laughs> it's fun. I love it. I'm still single though, if anybody, no, I'm not um, single. I am with the divine cosmic king, if anybody's ready to come on in. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you said you were moving to Hollywood and you've been in Boston for yeah, I'm in Boston. quite a bit of time. Are you still in Boston? I had to move back into my okay. parents' house because I, my business collapsed. Um, and so, you know, it's funny cause I should be like ashamed and you're like, wait, I thought you were this millionaire. No, no, I had to, I basically had to emanate a situation where I drained myself. Um, it was part of my path in order for me to balance my business and my own feminine and masculine energy. This is what will happen when you are living a life. Okay. Life is a spiritual path. If you are an entrepreneur, you are going to go through looking at every bit of your shit in this lifetime. We're gonna see huge corporations collapse, ones that are built on tyranny. And so for me, um, I was able to do that really quickly. So I moved back into my parents' house um, and I hired like the most amazing coach. He's unbelievable. And we're just getting me back on my feet. Um, and I should be hopefully in California by the end of the month. Um, oh yeah, yeah, well, because oh, wow. I moved pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I'm like living on my parents' couch. Um, but if it doesn't happen, then it's not meant to happen at that time. And then my my desire is to get out there and get a television show and have fun. I I roller skate and I love I like my desire. I went and saw Jordan Peterson and um I fell asleep. I didn't fall asleep. I was like straight up into it, right? I was like full because he he talks about so much mm -hmm. of the stuff that I talk about: trauma, energy, the anima animus, the understanding of the brain and the psychology behind why we are as humans. And the guy I was with fell asleep, a friend of mine, and I was like, "This is fucking boring." And I I'm like, "Imagine if we had music and roller skates and like fun." And I was like jabbing people with truth about their mother wound fuck it would be awesome and so that's that's my desire is to really step into that more tiktok dance I, do you follow me on tiktok 
I need to do a little bit more. I do some sexy dances on TikToks every once in a while. And it's confusing because people are like, wait, is she a thirst trap or is she healing my shitty narcissistic ex-wife? <laughs> Who is this lady? <gasps> it's funny. So yeah, so I'm, I'm planning on doing all of that. And um, yeah, in my, part of my template and my dharma in this lifetime is to get people in to their soul's desires. Like if you have a soul's desire of like jumping on the stage and writing a book and fucking living life, it, like you can do that. You just have to create it. Um, and that involves um, taking down a lot of what's going on in Hollywood now. And we're going to see that hopefully in the next five to 10 years. Well, yeah. we've already th I think we've already started seeing well, I, it. I'd because, still say the majority of the major um, companies um, in like the media and entertainment companies are still um, not like benevolent in this moment, but I'd like to hear your perspective, what you were going to share. Well, um, I mean, obviously we know that there's a lot of corruption in the um, Hollywood scene. And yeah. some people can see it, some people don't when they're in it. Um, but, you know, us as bears, we've kind of, if you've been a bear for a long time, like you've gone through the journey of really like focusing on different aspects of it because Owen is from Hollywood. Like yeah, he was yeah. working in Hollywood for a number of years. And um, it really started with the, like the Me Too movement, even though that we can sit here and make fun of it, it was a revelation on a grand scale of what was going on. Um, Harvey Weinstein abusing women. Um, there's just little yeah. revelations of what well, uh, uh, Spacey. Spacey. What's his What's his face? Spacey. Kevin Spacey. Revelations on him um, abusing other young I men. Don't, I don't know. And so, like, I think that there's going to be like. There's going to be like, like uh, yeah. because we're like in an apocalypse where yeah. all the truth is this being is revealed. And so, and so you're going to start to see more and more things like that just kind of yeah. get peppered There's in. There's still here so there. much. Um, like, I journey, like, um, you know, I've said I, I, my part of my Dharma is to lead men into like ayahuasca ceremony so there's um there's a lot of stuff that's gonna come through still but most of this stuff happens because of the grid work so um the templating and the gridding that's going on in different parts of the world with light workers so we're light workers are positioned all over the planet like big big bear is a light worker right he's a light worker he's gathering a group of men um that are in my what i believe is going to happen is going to come together with the group of women that i'm bringing together and i do believe that we're going to get a lot of people together in divine union um who knows that's just something that i've known since because i fell into the bears and i was like why am i in here like what who is this guy and then the craziest thing and we've talked about this is like it's so synced up my son wants to be a comedian he's already like Oh, five seven. I'm five seven. So he's about five seven. He's thirteen. Just got back from a trip to Europe on his own. Country fourteen and fifteen, and he's just like such an amazing kid. And he's so fucking funny and he, like wicked edgy, like wicked edgy. And he's like, and he's like at this desire to be this comedian. And it's like me and my son, and then we have my husband who's like choosing not to grow and lives very, very far away. And he's like, not really part of my family. I wish he was, but he's just choosing not to grow in this lifetime in the moment, in the moment. And so it's really like, so crazy. Cause it's like almost like repeating, except I believe, like you said, we're going to see a lot of this really come to the surface. Most of these, most of these things with the child trafficking, they're all coming to light because there's, there's people doing the actual grid work, um, in the community and like the higher, higher, uh, vibrational spiritual communities. Um, and it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome to watch. Pretty cool. Yeah. And you know, I've been, following Owen for a number of years and watched him grow from where he yeah. has been to where he is now. And so, um, like he is definitely making a big impact, even though it's like such a small group of people. Yeah. If you just consider the number of people 
Um, and it's fine to be a small remnant like that. It's totally okay because you can still make a big yeah, impact yeah. with a small remnant. And um, so it's just been really nice to see somebody actually go out and, um, yeah. you know, speak for the kids, whether it's, you know, um, like giving them hormone blockers, giving uh, like changing their genders, like kind of messing with them or even molesting them, um, whatever that, whatever it is, yeah. he's always been this really strong, um, protector, or at least somebody that's going to stand up and say something, even if it's, um, to his, like to his loss, he'll go out and yeah. say something when it matters. And so it's really nice having these um, men yeah. in these and roles. There's, there's to so do many that women because... that are doing it as well. And it's like so beautiful. I don't know um, if you're, do you follow many of like the star seed women that are like really penetrating like these really deep truths? Yeah, there's like some really deep, deep stuff coming out, but it's beautiful. And we need those leaders. We need these leaders coming up. Like they're, like I said it earlier with the Andrew Tate stuff, like complaining about it is so like it's such a waste of time set the energetic intention of making 10 million dollars in the next three years set that motherfucking intention and if that number scares you you need to figure out why because that ain't a scary number you want to make real change you need billions i literally every day i'm like i am a billionaire i am the queen of my company i am married to the strongest man in the world in this moment in time can any of those things be true in this moment no, but they can be in the energetic realms and I can just work every day to make it and create it. You know what I mean? And that's 90% of it is your energy. So you want to make a difference. That's how I feel like you should make difference. Get the money and go, get the money and go. Like, it's funny because even in this, I don't know where I'm going with this, but spiritual community, sometimes they'll be like, oh, if you're spiritual, you shouldn't have money. Actually, it's the least spiritual thing you can do. The billionaires are the ones that do the philanthropy work. And guess who they're giving their money to in their philanthropy acts? More billionaires. <laughs> like, yeah, sure, they're helping, but they're only helping enough. They know how to puppeteer people down here. If you don't have that in you and you want to make real change, you, you, want to, you want to go for it. If it's in your heart's desire, it's not for everybody. And it's for some people. And hopefully it's for someone listening to this transmission. <laughs> yeah and um like i said earlier just c touching back to it um like people have really odd yeah. emotions touched attached to money and um it is it's yeah. it's not a bad thing it, it's literally they yeah, call it current, current yeah. c yeah. it's current it's, c it's, it's an energy it's an energy that um <clears throat> For example, like if I was if I was bartering bartering with somebody, there's an exchange of energy. Like I took me this long to make this one thing, and it took you this long to make this one thing. Or um, you have this thing, and it's value. You think it's valued at this, and um, you come to an agreement to to switch it. Well, if somebody has one thing, and you just have like a silver coin then you can decide, okay, it's worth, you know, sure. three silver coins for me to get that, uh, whatever it is. And, um, it's, it's always there. It's, it's not going away. There's, it's what is kind of running through this, this world and, um, definitely checking into how your perception of that is, is valuable for the longest time. I was like, well, um, um, I don't need money. Right. And I kept on saying like, Oh yeah, I don't need money. It's not the most important thing to me. And it's still like, it's not the most important thing to me. That's just me and my realness. However, I do need it to support me, mm -hmm. to pay my bills, yeah. to, yeah. um, you yeah. know, feed myself. Oh, and, you cannot and there, there is a need for it. Not that I want that to be that is, the truth. It's that just, is the I reality. Have to that as when the reality. somebody is in the spiritual community talking to other people about not needing money and that like you have God's gifts and you shouldn't charge for money. I have never met a man, a lawyer, an accountant, a doctor that talks that type of bullshit. 
you want on one hand you want everybody in their soul's truth and doing spiritual work and then on the other hand you tell them not to charge for their their services it is so warped and on top of it there's like a real deep like there's a lot of deep inversions around money people the money is the root of all evil money means power in people who have power have like people who have power are bad and they're evil and like all of these things that you create but have you been broke i've been broke it is not fun you don't feel safe you feel like you need to protect yourself i had no money coming in for like two months i had a man die after telling me he was going to give me five hundred thousand dollars he died on the way to get the money i was like oh my god i had hired three team members i like it it is not a good feeling to have that safety taken away and you have to create the safety inside yourself so that you can create that exact same safety externally and it comes down to your worth i have an amazing abundance activation i should put it in the chat for everybody it's free you listen to it for 21 days it's my voice there's some light language um, and I talk about scarcity mindset and then I do an energetic, like, it's like a meditation. You put it in your ears and you listen for 21 days. People have miracles happen. People get like $5,000 or like big, big business ideas. Um, and so I'm happy to share that with the bears because, um, because I think there's an interesting thing that happens with money is people say these things. And then if somebody was like, here's a million dollars, like you'd be, you'd be down like it's such a strange situation so i don't actually have room for that type of shit in my life i'm like no no i want that money the money loves me i love god loves paying me um god asked me to get the money so that i can help as many people as possible and um also get many else done it's part of my it's part of my divine assignment is to be hot um, so i'm going for it you should be hot too yeah you don't ever see no queens yep. or kings rocking around in sweatpants and croc. These kings. It was kings. Yeah, yeah Huckleberry you does need that cheddar about, titty bear. Um, crocs and sweatpants. I know. Yeah. I'm no. Know. I, I I've never not owned a pair of with crocs. the sweatpants agenda <laughs> either. And like women wearing sweatpants, it's a problem for me. Like it's a problem. I. It's only a problem because I live in the suburbs and nobody's walking around in like dkny or like calvin klein's they're we wearing like you know like three-day-old stained shit it's it's disturbing and so um it's more of a joke and also a, a harsh truth that we've got like a lot of lazy people in this world and so therefore i'm saying get up do your thing set the energetic intention to make 10 million dollars in three years and then ask god to structure it so that you can do that and it'll happen if you believe it enough it'll happen right remember the guy that wrote it down for you yep yeah yep he ended up believing it i don't know that if that's necessarily a mind manipulation or if it was actually like true so yeah. i'll have to think about it a little bit more but it's it really is powerful to like have that written down and then to believe it i think they're like our attention is the most important thing. Like it's the most valuable thing that we have is our attention and where we put that attention. When a so woman um, becomes present and is out of her head and feeling in her body. She is the ultimate creator. She's literally a magnet for whatever she believes to be true. So when I, I recalibrate my energy every month to certain amounts of money that I desire to take. So I, for a year, almost a year, I said, there is a billionaire coming. He's coming. The billionaire is coming. He's coming. And then boom, I've met three billionaires in the last like six months. None of them have come in yet. I think I called them in a little too early energetically. And also at the same time, I know they can't come in until I'm at a certain place in my own framework. They can, they can but it will be in an, in like a trauma bond. So they, I believe I'm protected by God enough that they wouldn't come in. Um, until I'm in a sovereign place to take a contract with them. Um, I, I set the terms of the contract with one of them and he didn't like the terms and he kept trying to get free work for me. Sometimes men do that. They'll jump in my DMs and they'll be like, just jump on a call with me, jump on a call with me. I'm like, it's $555. I can't be in your energy unless you pay me first. It doesn't work that way. Um, and you can feel like the leakiness um, 
but they can't get in. And so then usually the, the energy of the money um, will uh, push them back. And so they'll come back when they're ready. It's, it's interesting to watch. I just entered a contract with a man um, and his wife. They're amazing. They have a $10 million business and he, his wife and his uh, right-hand woman, he, both of them are taking my program Self-Worth Warriors and his wife's working with me privately because he sees it. He's like, wait, I'm making more, more money with my wife getting feminine. I'm going to get my other woman in there. And I'm like, yes. And then he's got another third woman that works at his company. He's like, I think I'm going to bring her in too. I'm like, this is exactly what you should be doing. And um, it's a beautiful thing. So yeah, like opening up all their hearts. And both of those two women are in relationships. So they're, they're, their marriages will improve. So it's like an amazing ripple effect. Cool, right? I love it. Um, I, yeah, it's, it's amazing, especially when you see it oh, yeah, time it's, after time. It's, it's like, like a proven, proven thing. Like, so. You know, if you ever, have you heard of the book, Thinking Grow Rich with Napoleon Hill? It's a classic. It's from the fifties. And he speaks about sexual transmutation and like the understanding of energy. And in even Donald Trump at one stage, someone goes, how do you get rich? And Donald Trump said, you're born with it. It's in your genetics. And the guy was like, like, what does that mean? And it is, it's your DNA. So if you come from a line of family that has gone through the depression, a dad that worked 95 hours a week, could never get ahead, covering everybody, sacrificing himself for you, self-sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. You don't have to sacrifice. It's a fucking program. And we're, and so many people on these lower timelines are, are working off that program and they don't have those programs up the top. That's why when they go bankrupt, they get the money right back. It's also why when Joe Schmo wins a million dollars in lottery, he, he loses it because he, he actually, his thermometer internally can't hold the money. He like splurts it out. I went through that. I went through that myself. Every time I'd get like a big, big, I'd have a big month, I would just push it away. And um, in a way, it was like my own fear of like being seen by God. Like that's a deeper truth, but masculine money is a masculine energy. Yeah. And so like when, you, wow. yeah, so when I know big, big, truth, that's crazy. when a woman <laughs> gets money and spends it, like and a yep. lot of men are in these situations where their wives are like controlling the money and women have so many emotional attachments. If she's not regulated, she will continue to push the money away because it's covering and she doesn't, she wants the covering. Most women want and desire this covering. And when they get it, they want to push it away. Father wound. Yeah, I'm definitely like, I've shifted a lot of my um, thoughts in where my money is going to go. And it's like, you know, I still yeah. have some student loans. It's not a lot, but it's still, I still have it. And I'm like, okay, I just need to yeah. get rid of this, like clear it, clear it. And I've been yeah. really focusing just mentally. Okay. This is how I'm going yeah. to do it. It's going to be cleared. And you know, the other thing is like, I of want course. to be able to travel more yeah. and, and I'm trying to find that balance between you know, having my job and then being able to travel and really working that into how can I make it work? And I'm, I've been working on it for like, uh, probably about th three months. So in April, it was a kind of a big shift for me, but I'm, I'm just like, okay, I'm going to be traveling. So I'm going to the Bertaria festival in Missouri and, um, planning to go visit friends um, maybe out of the country for the first time in my life. And um, so things are on the horizon and it's like, definitely, I don't care what anybody says. They can call it manifesting. You can call it authoring the dominion. Authoring like the you dominion. can make these things happen. <laughs> Is that and a thing? Authoring the dominion? I don't <laughs> even know what that means. Yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. Good. Okay. Well, you're naming oh, it. Say, yeah. You're yeah. naming the dominion. That. Yeah. 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 You're just how it's going to be. Because you can be in a situation and you can be in the same situation. And one is you can think that you're in, yeah. in like a hellish situation, right. or you can see sure. the gratitude sure. in your situation 
And the more that you see the gratitude in your situation, the more that, so, you know, you get blessed. So can I tell you, that. like, remember we were talking like, earlier and I said, I don't really believe in betrayal. That is one of the most triggering things that I share. And people are like, yes, he hurt me. He betrayed me. Um, no, somewhere along the line, there was a betrayal, whether it's in this lifetime or the last lifetime. This is bigger truth, right? People, people often just think about what's happening right now. In their life like they don't realize that well this is infinite life and you still have another 60 years from down the line you're probably gonna you may if you don't clean it up if you don't clean that karma up you're gonna probably betray somebody 60 years from now so there's 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 this way that the human mind works where like right now is the immediate problem a good example is there was a man that came into my life we entered a contract i knew that the contract was against my soul i was new I knew it. I still took the ride with him. We entered this contract. Turns out he was doing something behind my back for a year. I had no emotional reaction to it. My best friend was like, oh my God, did he betray you? Are you okay? And I was like, it's so weird because I knew that I went against my intuition. I betrayed myself. I betrayed myself. I still took the contract with him. He's still a good man. He only did that thing because he can't see his own shit. It wasn't, it had nothing to do with me. And I, and that's when I realized, I'm like, oh my God, there's no such thing as betrayal. Betrayal is a behavior that someone does to emanate an emotion off of us that says somewhere we're not worthy. Everything comes back to self-worth and self-love with God. Everything. It's like, always do you trust the plan enough do you surrender enough to god's will and god's divine plan to accept every single thing the villain and the angels like all of it or are you the type of person that's going to only look at the light and shut out the dark i don't live my life like that and i truly believe that's how i begin winning more is because i accept my villain i have been the villain and just as much as I haven't been the villain, villain, and that is real leadership right there. When you're actually able to stand on a pedestal and say, you know what, I did fuck up. I forgive myself because I didn't know. You can't, you can't, you cannot push somebody into seeing something if their soul is simply not ready to see it. Right person can say it at the right time. That's why we need leaders. That's why we need people up here on their little soapbox talking about whatever the hell it is that they want to talk about. And equally. Um, if they're not ready to see it, they can't see it. Can't see it. Yeah. Yep. So good. It's all energy. It's, it's, uh, energy. it's like it, it is law of dominion thing. I'm just so curious about that. Why? Why did you say that? You said that twice. Do people just not believe in manifestation in this group? It, that's still that's interesting to me. I think I don't think that people don't believe in it. I think that wow. there is a stigma around it that um i've just heard it a couple different ways a couple different times yeah. and i listen to a lot of audio so i don't know yeah. like <laughs> time is definitely not <laughs> linear with best. this girl so i don't know if it was <laughs> recent or if it was <laughs> or if it was in the past but it's it's all relevant because it's you know no matter what part of the linear timeline it is yeah. it still is a relevant yeah. situation to where you're at Manifest and um it's just that there's like a question of like how much control you, you actually have um and a lot of people that's think the that they don't have well, that's the, problem. the control that's the problem. in their life <laughs> and yeah. and they'll start pointing at other people and then they're yeah. the victim because they can't do anything about it when in fact the opposite is true is like they're almost speaking into them just sure. not taking action yeah. or control of themselves. And um, that's why they're the victim. It's like you just said, I, the, he right. didn't betray me. I betrayed myself. It, it, uh, they didn't, they didn't really hurt me. Um, it was me that put myself right. in that position that's and right. continued and to look, do that. I've been codependent and drained by somebody like I, that happened for me. That happened for me. I created that scenario so I could see empathetically how difficult it is coming out of a narcissistic abuse relationship. Because remember, my though I was conscious and loving and kind toward my first husband, when I left him, he felt abandoned. And when you have 
um, like, it's like, if you can almost, I'm going to write this down. Like you almost like narcissism. This is why it hurts so much. Okay. Is because why, why did none of these pens work? Okay. I'm pen number three guys. Okay. So around us, this is a human in the center, right? This is a human. And then we have four pillars, emotional and mental, spiritual, financial, and then physical. So if, if you're a human and you're in a physical abusive relationship, one of your pillars gets knocked down. Okay. So, or you have a, you break your leg. All right. Your physical hurts and maybe a little bit of your spiritual and your emotional, and then you have to be out of work for two months. So your financial starts to, to, to dip down. Right. So these are like four pylons around your energetic field. And then I'm making this up on the spot. I feel like this is actually really good. So we're in here. Right. And so we've got, we've got these four pylons what happens when we have narcissistic abuse is they are actually, their, their ego is feeding, right? Remember, they can't see what they're doing, but they're feeding just a little bit. They're giving you a little bit of love here in your financial, and then they're giving a little bit of love in your spiritual, and then they're giving you breadcrumbing, and they're breadcrumbing you in your emotional, and that feels really good, and then they take it away, and then like you want it again, and you take it. It's like you've got all these hooks so when the narcissist leaves or when the woman leaves or the man leaves, they fucking cut all four of them at the same time. So your financial is drained, your physical. I, I, after it happened for me, I broke out in a rash. Um, I've lost a ton of weight. And then I also had my spirit, spiritual and my, my spiritual, I was like, what is this higher dimensional truth? And then lastly, the emotional aspect where I was like, what could I have done differently? How could this, my, was it me? Was it them? So you're dealing with all four areas. It's like your psyche is completely targeted. Um, and so for me, I just live in a truth where that does, yes, it hurts. And it's part of my own creation. And I, and I created that because I was afraid of my own power. And I was codependent on that man to try to save me. And so when, and when a man does it with a woman, it's because he's afraid of his own love. So he hooks onto another woman as a codependent. And then when she leaves, he hates all the women and he never wants to be with women again. And then he goes and he follows somebody like Andrew Tate, who's also afraid of his own love. So this is, this is how it works. So we need strong people that can understand a graph like this and go, wait a minute, that actually happened to me. And now that I see it, I can rebuild it again because God wants me to. Boom. Yeah. It's fun. Absolutely. Boom. <laughs> well, we've been going for two hours and I, I know, have I'm to boogie out a little off. bit. Um, but I do want to comment on um, Spies' live. And um, it says, I'm always rooting for the villain in movies. And I want to um, just comment that there's been, like one of the recent streams that um, I think about when I'm uh, thinking of Owen streams is um, Voldemort did nothing wrong. And, and um, it was just an interesting, so from, from uh, the entire Voldemort film. is, yeah. Harry Potter and um, it, it was an interesting stream because it showed how the villain um, in most movies was actually oh she's gone um, maybe she'll pop in um, how the villain was actually the good guy and the um, heroes were the bad guy um, well, maybe not good and bad, but you guys get what I mean. Let's see if we can get her back in here. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. So that's why my book, my book is called The Empath is the Narcissist. It is the understanding of your dark aspects and your, and your light. Everything you see in other is some aspect of, the, of self, of thyself in a judgment form, if you're living by the word of God, you don't judge it, you hold it. And so there have been many moments in my life where 
I remind a lot of people of their narcissistic ex-wife or girlfriend or whatever. And then I'm like really consistent with my love. So it's very mind fuckery. It can be really mind fucking for people in my life. They're like, what is this? And um, I would never hurt a fly. And I have a very strong level of, of emotional capacity. So these women are quite magnetic for men. We're like, you know, like we're fun. We're, emotional we're a lot of love and if that's not regulated that woman's gonna hurt a man and that man doesn't may not understand the cosmic divine mother energy and think that this woman was out to get him and out to destroy him and the reality is that's not it at all it has to happen so that that man can access his heart inside himself and then from there, his divine counterpart will find him. And so there's, there's so much in this, like, you know, there's, I will never stop owning the parts of me that were, that didn't know, like you have to own the villain. You cannot rightfully be a good leader in person. If you don't own it, you don't have to hold on to it. You have to forgive those karmic pasts, but you know, my coach just had me do, he had me write down the last seven years in my behavioral patterns of the last seven years. And I learned that I, I moved my son eight times, eight times. And I was like, oh my God, I'm out here screaming about trauma in children while I'm over here moving my son that much. I need to repair this so that I'm at a really high level of emotional capacity for my son. And so, because you, because anything can happen outside, but how am I moving him? Am I moving him fast? Am I moving him in a way that makes sense? And now we're moving to California and my, and my first husband is going to move from, from Australia to California. So there's like some beauty there because we'll be able to set up a home and it's okay now. It's okay now because we work on his emotional regulation. But I had to look at that. That's my behavior, and so many of it, and you do it with your bank account and your debt. You like can kind of shove it into like the darkness because you don't want to deal with it, and it's it's much easier to shove it in the darkness than it is to look at it because when you look at it, emotions come up and emotions of embarrassment and shame and disappointment and sadness, those don't feel good. And because they don't feel good, we don't want to feel them. And the reality is, is that they're not bad. They're just, they're just emotions. <laughs> then Bob Morris and Bear needs oh my God. some Xanax. That's, Tell are you typing? Like what's going on? For? too much it's too much he's like oh my god she's talking about my life <laughs> <laughs> just kidding um well i want to say um i want to say thank you for coming on um if you want to plug yeah. where people can oh, find you well. now would yeah, be the time find me on instagram i do lots of mm -hmm. different energy on instagram it's fun um, I also have an awesome Facebook group. If you guys are in there, I do a lot of live transmissions and freebies. You can hit me up in DMs if you want a um, copy of my abundance activation. You just listen for 21 days. It's really amazing. Move some of that scarcity out of your field, your energy field, and line you up. Um, and if you want to do sessions with me, it would be awesome. And I'm doing Self Worth Warriors, which is for men and women. And it's so much fun. Um, it's such an awesome, awesome program. I also do an intro session for men. Um, the, it's 555. It's equal to like eight, eight weeks of coaching. Um, we do energy work and it's, it's amazing. The men that I work with have huge, huge results, uh, in a lot of different ways, lots of upgrades fast. Um, that's really it for now. I'm so thrilled that like, I got a chance to come on. I love the bears. They're fun. And also like, yeah, there's so much good stuff coming out of this, out of what you guys are creating. And yeah, I'm so happy for Owen. Like, it's awesome to watch like him have such success over, over like the period we both sort of started together and like, or rather not together, but this started at the same time and Bertaria started at the same time that I got called into my work. And I took like mm -hmm. this crazy road of like creating like 15 programs and like all of this stuff and then watched it all collapse. 
and it's it's so weird i like built it all and then now it's all collapsed and i'm like going back at it at a different energy it's really cool to watch because i'm like i think i'm about to blast off let's see what happens let's see what the big man's got in store but that's what happened to me and before it took me nine years to build it all up and i decided because of something because of a letter that one of the bear ladies wrote i decided to take it all down and it took me a couple a couple years yeah. to take it down but it was like you i was basically commanded yeah. like you need to take so it down funny. that's so funny that you said nine and years rebuild. because you know that's like the average length excuse me the average span of a of a person to make a million dollars in their business is nine years and i wrote a book called emotional i wrote two books this year one's called emotional intelligence creates unicorns the fastest way to make millions in your business and my desire is to prove that i can make millions in three years and um and I'm living that right now. I'm trying to live that and prove that. And it takes about nine years for business to build up or for business to collapse, where my collapse happened in like year two. And so I was like, oh, all I'm doing is watching the collapse happen really quickly so that I can experience the collapse and like go back in and, and do it with the right energetics. It's like major, major trust. And um, it's really cool that you you just said that 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 it took you about nine years. So there's a there's a group. I know we gotta go, but it's called S O E P. It's a it's a study out of Germany. Uh, I can't remember what the acronym is. And they say ninety percent of self made millionaires have one link in common, and it's regulated emotions. Because when you're doing entrepreneurial work, you have to look at yourself. You, you're, you're living this, it is the spiritual journey. It's like insane. And so, um, you can speed that up, uh, by doing energy work and, and man manifesting it or whatever you want to say faster. Cause you're releasing the attachments. Um, absolutely. Awesome. Well, um, I want to say thank you to the bears. Thank you. Um, Asha for coming yes. on and hanging out with us. Um, and, uh, just letting the other bears know that I'll be oh, probably doing like maybe two times a month, I'm not trying to overburden myself with too many, um, oh. extra activities. I still have a lot of other things going on in my life and it's, it's almost queen. canning. It's canning season it right now. What am I saying? Almost. Yes. It is canning season. I love this. Okay. Limbaugh Morrison bear said, I need more than bourbon and whiskey, bourbon whiskey to get through this too much for him he says oh my god <laughs> he's probably gonna lose five pounds after this shit good lucky him and if you want to find me on tiktok i do um <laughs> dances in my roller skates and also burkas <laughs> someone suggested a hijab and a burka <laughs> oh that's so funny i do have an only fans but i haven't so... started it yet and I, because I, I go, oh, I go, oh, I'm going to go on there in lingerie and read my book and heal everybody. <laughs> it's like, I told you it's like thirst <laughs> trap healing. <laughs> it's funny. I was like, I wonder what this even means. I'm just rolling with it. I'm down with whatever. I'll tell you right now, my girlfriend, Avatara, she's she, Ananda. She's like a, she's a, a good friend of mine. She, we were on the phone last night. She's smoking hot. Like there are so many beautiful divine feminine in this world. I'm like, what is happening right now? Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. And so I just think it's amazing. And I'm like, I think that there's so much that's going to keep coming up with all that uh, sexual energy that's going to be coming through this place. Once we get everybody in divine union. Oh. <laughs> awesome um well thank you so much again and yes. thank you to the chat for sticking around and i hope that this is this was a little bit healing for you i shared a little bit about some of the major things that i've kind of gone through this year and yeah. um so yeah you're such a gorgeous always soul. good to see you're you doing amazing work and i can't wait to see you on the farm It's coming. I'm yeah. waiting for it. <laughs> it's coming. Oh, that was I'll awesome. write it down. I love you so much. <laughs> and if anybody wants the link for right. Self Worth Warriors, we start on Wednesday and it is such a fun program. It's like 10 weeks. You will literally leave a different person, like in all the best ways. 
hit me up. Oh, you have yep. gone through it. I've gone it through. Fun. Yep. It's such I've a gone. Fun. I've or gone through it. Brand new, brand new. <laughs> a couple We're times. Completely, I completely redid it. It's like crazy good. Yeah, I know. It's going to be so oh, much wow. fun. I cannot freaking wait. Tons of work with the archetypes. Tons of work with king and queen. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. I love it. Oh. Just refining okay. it. All right, gorgeous. All right. Well, have a good I evening. I got to get Thank my young in. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> Bye, Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. I'll just click out of this.